in the next hour or so. Big news, ANC Secretary General Ace Makashule will appear in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court on Friday. The Hawks say he faces charges of fraud and corruption relating to the more than 250 million rand asbestos scandal in the Free State. Now, what are some of the implications of such a high-profile arrest? And what does it mean for the governing party? Let's find out. Bring in our reporter, man in the know, SABC reporter, Samkele Maseko. He's joining us now live via Skype. Samkele, always a pleasure having you on the program. Firstly, any reaction as yet from the ANC with regards to this warrant of arrest? Yes, indeed. Takota uh, Lekhot, the ANC's National Executive Committee member and NWC member, did speak yesterday in Soweto where the Secretary General of the African National Congress, Ace Mkhashule, was campaigning and saying that they are appealing for calm from all ANC structures as the Secretary General of the ANC now faces this uh, non-warrant of arrest, non-warrant of arrest, because he's not going to be uh, essentially given that infamous Gulf 7 ride of uh, the Hawks. Uh, he will instead hand himself over on Friday morning uh, to the uh, specialized uh, commercial uh, investigative unit of the Hawks in Bloemfontein on Friday morning at 10 o'clock. Then from there, he will proceed to the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court, where we will face those charges of uh, fraud and corruption and money laundering, which relate to his association and alleged entanglement with uh, the 255 uh, million rand asbestos contract in the Free State uh, Province, which includes businessmen of uh, Blackhead Consulting, Edwin Sodi. But the political implications and ramifications for this is that uh, you may find that there may be an internal revolt within the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress, within the NWC, within various provinces, particularly for those who are supporting Ace Mahashule. Mm. Just like we saw in the build-up to the 2005 National General Council of the African National Congress, when then the president of the ANC and president of the country had fired the deputy president of the country, Jacob Zuma, and subsequently suspended the deputy president of the African National Congress, that would be Umsholozi or Jacob Zuma. What sort of support is Mr. Makashula getting from within the ANC? We saw Mzondele Masina uh, tweeting yesterday. Uh, tell us more. Essentially, uh, Ace Makashula will have uh, a significant backing within the African National Congress. You'd remember that the 2017 conference of the ANC, there was no outright winner. And there are those who still support uh, the former president, whom essentially will align themselves with the Secretary General of the African National Congress. You've got the likes of Zandile Kumete, who is also facing legal battles in the Itaguini region. You've got the likes of Denim Caesar uh, in, in Limpopo, whom have seemingly also aligned themselves with uh, the Secretary General. He's the treasurer of the ANC in Limpopo. You've got the likes of Takota Lekwete, the likes of uh, Supra Muhammad Pilo in the Northwest Province, who've also uh, been removed in the structures of the ANC in the virtue of that PEC in that province was disbanded. Uh, he was in the provincial task team of the ANC in that province and subsequently resigned from that particular structure. You've got uh, the Free State Province, which is the home province of the ANC, and ironically, that's where the ANC was born in Bloemfontein in 1912, and uh, that's essentially where the battleground for the soul of the ANC is essentially going to be placed going forward with, uh, this, uh, with the ensuing battle between the 10th floor of Lutrilli House, which is the presidency office, and the sixth floor, which is the secretary general's office. And then you've got a conundrum where you've got uh, a structure like the PEC in KwaZulu Natal, which has remnants and moved uh, towards supporting President Sir Ramaphosa, but you still got the likes of Super Zuma, the former provincial secretary, who are still pretty much aligned to the secretary general of the ANC, Ace Mahashule. You've got the likes of the disbanded regional chairperson in the Moses Mapita region, very troublesome region, in the form of um, Tandenu Lungwana whom have also seemingly are still disgruntled that the Secretary General of the ANC did not fight their battles of having a regional conference within that particular region in the stipulated time and not having that particular region disbanded. So there are pockets of support for Ace Barashule across the country, but the all-important decision of the future of the ASG will be taken by the National Working Committee of the ANC recommending to the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress what should happen to the SG since he is now formally charged with fraud and will be formally charged on Friday rather with fraud and corruption and money laundering. And the ANC has a 2017 conference resolution that all leaders who are charged with corruption should voluntarily step aside. Yeah. If not, the ANC will force them to step aside. But here's the conundrum, Blaine. There are no guidelines as yet to stipulate how one should step aside mm. and not step aside. Hence, you've seen Michael Mambuya Kule in KwaZulu-Natal mm. mm. being brought back into the fore as the deputy chairperson of the province. 
Hence, you see the likes of Bongani Pongo, who has still mm. not yet stepped aside despite facing two charges of one of bribery and the other of, uh, of fraud, corruption and money laundering mm. alongside his younger brother and others accused uh, whilst he was still the HOD of um, human settlements in Mpumalanga of mm. legal. That will be the big question, I guess. I want to zoom in to some of the uh, tweets that uh, one person in particular has been very vocal with regards to that, uh, Mzondile Masina, tweeting yesterday that arresting leadership based on apartheid laws does not make sense. I reject this arrest and will be in court with my SG to support him against uh, his democratic uh, disgrace. No stepping down is applicable until those documents are s unsealed in court. No to selective prosecution. How does this line up with his previous, uh, previous utterances when you, I think, engaged him a couple of months ago? Uh, has his stance changed with regards to this? It's something that talks to what you were saying about whether a person should step down or not if he's facing or her facing uh, these charges. The issue of politicians, there's a term I love which was coined uh, about uh, Kwede Mandashi, which is Mandashi. <laughs> Zwandile Masina has essentially Mandashed here because he was outside St. George's Hotel and uh, replicated uh, Ronald Lamula, whom stood alone outside St. George's calling for the resignation of former President Jacob Zuma. Masina went ahead and did the same and saying that all those who are charged with corruption within the African National Congress, those leaders must step aside and that the ANC must not save individuals, but the party must rather save itself. And if individuals have issues that they've got to answer to in a court of law, they must go there and go there alone. Those are the words of Mzwadi Lemasina a couple of months back when the National Executive Committee was sitting. And that's when uh, Tony Yengi made a reference in the NWC earlier on in that day that the president may lead, must lead by example and step aside. So now Mzadi yeah. Masina comes out uh, in saying that he's defending the Secretary General of the African National Congress. Hmm, surprising. Not surprising. Because you've got an allegiance of the African National Congress of those who perceive themselves as the radical economic transformation faction within the ANC. And in Gauteng, uh, the provincial dynamics, you've got a faction called Amakariki. And that Makariki faction is a direct replica of the radical economic transformation faction mm -hmm. nationally within the African National Congress, despite that Amakariki faction being aligned to a similar, uh, to a, a figure who's a former provincial chairperson of the ANC here in the province, or they've essentially uh, put themselves under that particular leader of the ANC, whom some say has uh, showed remnants of wanting to contest the position of presidency of the African National Congress. Mm -hmm. So Mzwandila Masina is essentially coming out to back the Secretary General of the African National Congress because him is, he is not in the same political allegiance with the ANC president when it comes to the national politics of the ANC, even going to Nasdaq. Mzandile Masina and the REC of Ekuruleni was backing Dr. Nkosa Zanadamini Zuma. So it's not surprising that Mzandile Masina would stand up and uh, defend the Secretary General of the African National Congress. Also, Ekuruleni has been dubbed the 10th province. Mm. Uh, what are you hearing, uh, Samkele, with regards to any utterances about possible civil unrest because of this arrest? You cannot equate uh, the charging of Secretary General Ace Mahashule to what uh, we saw in 2003, 2004, 2005 uh, at the, the National General Council of the ANC in the University of Pretoria, where the ground was fertile, if one may use that politi political term, for the former President Jacob Zuma. He had allegiance with uh, the left of uh, the ANC, which is the South African Communist Party, Kosatu and Sanko. The ground was very fertile, yet at the time you had uh, the alliance which was seemingly against uh, what, uh, or the, 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 the alliance structures which are seemingly against the various policies that were being pushed by then uh, president of the ANC, which they dubbed neoliberal policies of uh, former president Tabun Pegi, as they dubbed it the 1996 class project. Uh, then the ground was fertile for former president uh, Jacob Zuma to go and uh, portray himself as a victim, to go and swell the ranks of Kusatu, swell the ranks of the SACP, have the likes of Zulin Zemavavi yeah. going and campaigning for him, have the likes of the Youth League, Figil Mbalula, campaigning for him, and subsequently later on, Julius Malema turned political foe of former President Jacob Zuma. In this instance, uh, 10 or 15 years later, the ANC Youth League is a shadow of its former self. In fact, 
it's only a name that's left. Uh, that uh, rich history of the ANC Youth League has been duplicated and disseminated uh, post uh, the 2007 Polokwane Conference of the ANC and post uh, 2012 Mangaum Conference. You've got no youth league that can stand up and defend uh, Ace Mahashule as the Secretary General of the ANC. It's a shadow of it for myself. You've uh, got uh, a lame duck, uh, Kosatu, which is essentially in cahoots uh, with uh, the establishment uh, led by President Cyril Maposa. Now they won't come out and back the Secretary General of the ANC. Uh, you've got the ANC Women's League, uh, which is also finding itself in political limbo these days, despite uh, them being more prominent than the ANC Youth League. You've got some leaders of the Women's League who said that if you were to remove President Cyril Ramaphosa, you'd destabilize the African National Congress. Mm. So essentially, uh, Esma Khashule's support is left within the structures of the ANC in the Free State, pockets of the ANC in Gauteng, some structures uh, within the Eastern Cape province, which are seemingly aligned to Mlibo Kibushiane, the deputy speaker of the legislature and former speaker of the, and former spokesperson of the ANC in the Eastern Cape province. Uh, that faction is seemingly aligned to Andy Lelungisa. Then you've got the likes of Denim Caesar in uh, Limpopo, who yeah. will mobilize for the secretary general of the ANC in Gauteng. You've got Zandi Lamasina. And in uh, the Northwest province, you've got Supra Muhammad Pilo and KwaZulu Natal. You've got the likes of Supra Zuma who are also in line with the president. And we've got uh, the likes of uh, Karl Niehaus, uh, which uh, right. has become a political nemesis of Figile Mbalula. So on that note, I guess the big question is, under this current political climate, who do you expect to see in court or outside court in support of uh, the SG on Friday? You're likely to see the likes of um, Zwandi Lemasina. You're likely to see the Provincial Executive Committee of uh, the African National Congress in the Free State Province. You're likely to see the likes of Mlibo uh, Kovishian if he were to make the trip from the Eastern Cape. You are likely to see Super Zuma, uh, the, the likes of uh, Zandile Kumete, uh, the likes of, uh, particularly in Gauteng, your, your Karl Niehaus's, uh, I'm not sure which province he uh, belongs to, but I know he's from Kazulu Natal. And uh, it will be interesting, the likes of Mseben Zizwane, the former Minister of Mineral Resources and former Treasurer of the ANC yeah. in the Free State Province. Um, you're likely to see Bongani Pongo, the, the chairperson of uh, the Home Affairs Portfolio Committee, Faith Motambi. You're likely to see Blaine, to simplify it, the radical economic transformation faction within the African National Congress that is aligned to the former president of the African National Congress. Uh, that would be Jacob Zuma. It would be rather interesting to also see which uh, faces in the National Working Committee of the African National Congress decide to go and support the Secretary General of the ANC. We do know that uh, Tony Yengen has uh, tweeted that all roads on Thursday mm -hmm. and Friday lead to the birthplace of the African National Congress in Bloemfontein for them to go and support the Secretary General of the ANC. But the essence of these charges against the Secretary General is that it has exacerbated and deepened divisions and contradictions yeah. within the African National Congress. That party yeah. is split right down the middle. It's as if it's two parties in one organization. So, Kela, as we wrap up, I just wonder, with regards to, this is a high-profile case, no doubt. Um, and I wonder how much sway, in terms of reputational damage, uh, it will have on the ANC leading up uh, to the 2021 elections. Uh, and not going so far, this uh, warrant of arrest, the news came out on the eve of all important by-elections as well. I wonder how much sway it will have on voters uh, where national issue, a national figure on by-elections, on, on ward issues. Um, what's the ANC saying? Are they worried? The ANC is essentially, it's a, it's, as I said, it's two organizations in one. You've got one particular faction within the ANC which is represented by President Ramaphosa, the likes of Derek Kaneko, Pravin Gordon, mm -hmm which is essentially saying that uh, the criminal justice system in the country must work without fear or favor, must uh, arrest uh, whoever is uh, seen to be have had their hands in the cookie jar and uh, have uh, looted and plundered the resources of uh, the people of South Africa. Then you've got the radical economic transformation faction in the ANC, which says that uh, their state institutions are now being used to prosecute uh, those whom are fighting those who are in government right now, that particular core is linked to the Secretary General of the ANC, uh, Ace Mahashule. Then you've also got a particular core that is now starting, which is that of the Deputy President and Paul Mashatile, mm. which is just waiting in the wings and looking on. Then you've got an appetite by society 
that those whom are in the high echelons of the African National Congress and in government and in, polit and, and in political formation, they must also be prosecuted and charged for whatever nefarious uh, involvements they've had in corruption. And uh, seemingly there is an appetite by South Africans, particularly if you look at social media, yeah. you look at uh, some instances of uh, political commentators saying that they welcome these arrests of high prominent politicians, business people, but the proof is in the pudding in the successful prosecution of these individuals. We've seen arrests pre Polokwane by the Scorpions in what was dubbed the Hollywood style arrest by then Secretary General of the ANC, Khalema Mutlante. We are now seeing uh, arrest again by the Hawks, whom have seemingly sharpened and found their claws and, uh, once again. And it is now up to Shamila Potoy, the National Director of Public Prosecutions, and her team to make sure that there are successful, uh, successful prosecutions and convictions right. so that the governing party in their 2017 conference promised South Africans that law enforcement agencies will be bolstered, they will be strengthened, and there will be successful prosecutions of those who've planted the resources of our nation, including the president, last week Friday when addressing the National Union of Mine Workers, uh, his uh, home or his base, that uh, there will be successful prosecutions. So uh, it's up to them now, and the ANC can only be effectively campaigned on the virtue that they've got high-profile politicians being arrested. But yeah. it is the first time since the dawn of democracy that a sitting Secretary General of the African National Congress has been uh, seemingly charged. Sam Keller, as always, we'll lead on you to get the very latest with regards to this story. Come back to us uh, with regards to any further developments. We'll get you on there, give the viewers the very latest. Appreciate your reporting. Sam Keller Maseko there with regards to the warrant of arrest for Ace Makashule.